And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's video and tutorial we are launching the crochet challenges for September of 2014. We have for you in this challenge a container but it's not just any container, it'll be your special container. Let me tell you a little bit more about this in just a sec. If you'd like to fast forward to the tutorial now, just simply click on your screen and that will take you right to the start of the tutorial. If you're joining us with the challenge, here is what you need to know. So today's challenge, you're going to be working on a container and this is a free pattern available by redheart.com and you will notice that it has an owl face and this is the actual true size of the container. You're going to need two balls of Red Heart Super Saver. You're not going to use the complete balls but you'll get pretty close and the reason why you're using that is that you're going to use two strands at one time to give you the thickness that you need in order for the container to stand up by itself. Now here is the true challenge. Everybody has to complete one container and it has to be the actual pattern and it has to match the rows and etc so that you get the height. So we all have different tensions even if the height does not match what's in the pattern but you have the same amount of rows it's good enough for us. But here is what you need to do to make it even more exciting. Once you have your container done it's basically a blank slate that is open to your interpretation. You do not have to do the handles nor do you have to do the owl face that is on the container. My challenge to you is that you need to come up with and you can use the owl face if you want because there are three different motifs. You have to use a minimum of three crochet motifs to apply. You can do much more. You can add even mixed media. So for example I have a felted flower here with a button. You can add mixed media to this as well but three of them have to be crocheted. Now does it have to be Halloween or fall? Absolutely not. This is your creativity. Maybe you want a Christmas basket. Maybe you want to make it Halloweenish as a serving thing for your front door. Maybe a, a toy container so you might want a train or little dolls or something on the outside of it. Maybe for Easter. Maybe for even Valentine's. This is completely up to you. This is a great little storage bin. I have to tell you I could even put Lego in the inside of this. So what we want from you is that you can choose any colors that you wish. You can mix up your colors so they do not have to be all one solid. You can use variegated. You can use any yarn that you can get your hands on. You need to use two at one time to keep it from collapsing. And then basically the outside as long as you do three crochet motifs is completely up to you add ribbons, buttons as long as that there's creativity on the outside and when you snap a photo of it we need to at least see the three motifs. So for example this for me I would probably put on my, my show and tell table. So what I'm going to do is that I've only embellished only a partial side of it because I know the back side is not ever going to be seen. So this is a great opportunity for you to really explore your creativity. Now if you decide to decorate all sides and the motifs are not visible within the camera view you'll just have to take multiples of photos and send it to us so that we can be sure that you did get your three motifs done. So the challenge is going to run from September 1st all the way to September 30th until 11.59 Eastern Standard Time. We have a great giveaway from redheart.com today and we're going to load this up with some fun stuff. We have a sterling silver crochet hook necklace from Furl's Crochet Hooks in this package. We have even uh, this for example it's a metal um, platform that you put the magnets so that you can put your pattern on and then just move the magnets down and of course our friends at redheart.com has got us hooked up with some yarn that you can play with. What a great opportunity for trying some free samples. So if you'd like to be something really see something really cool an opportunity to be featured on Facebook even in our newsletters this is a great opportunity. So without further ado let's go on down to the studio and I'll show you how to make one of these containers right now. To begin we're going to be using two balls of Red Heart and it's a seven ounce ball just like so and you can find that on your crafting stores. So you need two strings working together that's why there's two balls so that we're always working with two strings as if they're one. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this. Now you'll notice that when I turn this around it looks like it's a basket weave and it certainly is. Now I've never seen a basket weave done in this way that's what attracted me to do this as a tutorial but what was more more interesting for me is that we start off at the bottom just like so and we work our way into circles but there's something really weird about the edging. Now normally in hats if you can identify that when you go from this 
to a flat edge, you will notice that it never goes like a 90 degree angle just like this. This pattern has been designed in a way that you will get that 90 degree angle and when I got to that point I was so confused and then I realized what the designer was thinking and then I thought it was pretty brilliant. So you're going to be able to decorate your container any way that you wish. You can see that it has um, you know great properties to it and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So Today we're going to use a 6.0 millimeter or a size J crochet hook with two balls of Super Saver running at the same time. And may your creativity be with you as you carry on. Today you also will be needing a stitch marker to help you count your revolutions as you go around. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot just like so with using both strands at one time. So I'm using two different colors to make it very easy for you to tell. And then we're just going to create a slip knot as normal. And remember there's other slower tutorials available on how to learn crochet if you need them. Now what we're going to be doing at this moment is that we're going to start off with the center ring at the very bottom of the bat, or bottom of the container. So we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And let's join this with the ring. So we're going to go into the very first chain that we started with, grab the yarn and pull through to form the first interior ring that we're going to go. Take the stragglers, just wrap it around and just hold it as we move on to the next round. Okay, round one says to chain three and it says count as a double crochet from here and on out and because it's double crochet it'll, you just have to you know work on it. It goes really relatively quickly. So I just chained three and we're going to put th uh, 11 double crochets into the center of that ring and it's going to cause it to rotate around. Okay, so we're just going to continue to do that and remember that the chaining of three does count as a double crochet. So in actual fact you should have 12 of these by the time you get all the way around. And what we're going to do then is join it with a slip stitch and then we are going to um, put a stitch marker in to help us. Now occasionally you will drop yarn. Uh, the two sometimes don't always work well together. So just uh, be conscientious of that. It does make a difference. So try it if when you drop it to pick it up before completing the rest of the stitch. Please make sure you have 11 or 11 double crochets with the chaining of three, total of 12 and then I'll meet you back up in just a moment. Okay, I have a total of my 11 double crochets plus the chain three which gives you a total of 12 and then we just want to come to the very top of where we started the chain three and just join it with the slip stitch like this. And what I want you to do, just pull up like this and insert your hook into the stitch that's right underneath and grab your stitch marker. In my case it's just spare yarn and we're going to mark that like so, so that we know whenever we hit this point that it's going to be the start and stop. So we're going to move that stitch marker up as we go and it's a very easy way to quickly identify your stitches as you go. So if you buried this yarn here, let's uh, just grab our scissors and cut that at this point like so and then that will be out of the way and now we can continue the rest of this tutorial. Okay, round two we're going to start up and we're going to chain three. One, two and three. Remember that counts as a double crochet and what we want to do is that we want to put right where that started another double crochet. And the next stitch, okay, is right here. Okay, so see how it's kind of leaning towards you and you're going to put two double crochets into every stitch going all the way around. So the secret is, is that if you have 12 spokes here and you're putting two into each one, that means by the time you're done this round you will have a total of 24. And that totally makes sense. So you'll see at the end of the instructions it says 24 DC. That's exactly what that means if you've never uh, followed an instruction before. So continue to put two double crochets into every stitch around and we're going to join with a slip stitch and finish off round number two. Okay, coming all the way around and make sure I get that last one in. You can see it here and just really easy. Uh, see how I just dropped one? I want to make sure that I don't ever do that. So it just, it does get taken, it does take a bit of getting used to I will say. So this is a great way to how to thicken up your afghans too if you're ever thinking about that. So we want to join it to the top of the beginning, chain three that we started with and before we continue just let's just grab that stitch marker. So we're going to insert the hook on the uh, on the underside of that where that loop is coming out of and grab that stitch marker and just feed it through this new one. And so it's going to happen here is that you'll see that this the stitch marker is going to follow a line all the way up. And so then that completes off round number two. Okay, round number three, let's begin. We're going to start off with the chain three, one, two, and three. And now we're going to start expanding. So the next stitch is right here. 
Okay, do you see the spokes? Just follow them up. It makes it sense. And then there's gonna be two double crochets in that one. Okay, so the other one we started off with double crochets right into the beginning. But this one here, we're now starting to expand out. So the circle has to grow equally. So the next one is just gonna be by itself. So the next thing, uh, double crochet is by itself. And then the next one has two. So that is the pattern going all the way around in order to make this work. Okay, so just review again. So one by itself and then the next stitch is going to have two. And please do that same configuration all the way around. I'll meet you back up in slip stitch and carry on. Okay, I'm coming all the way back around and I have another fabulous tip. So I have two stitches left and I've just finished off with two into the same stitch. Because of the way that this pattern works, you will always end up with the double um, two stitches together in the final stitch of every rotation when we're doing the circle part here. So the final stitch will always have two and if your count is off and you end up with one then you know something is wrong or you've miscounted along the way. So we're going to join the, the top of the beginning chain three just like so and let's move up that stitch marker and, and call this quits for round number three and let's please move up to round number four next. See how easy it is to do that, that stitch marker and you're keeping it in balance at the same time. Let's please move up to round number four and we're going to start off with a chain three, one, two, and three. And the first stitch that you run into is going to be by itself. It's gonna be a double crochet by itself. And so then the next one is gonna be two double crochets. So here is another tip for you. You love tips, so I'm gonna give you one. So do you see how there's two single crochet or two doubles by themselves? This chain three counts as one. So that's the configuration going all the way around. So there's gonna be two double crochets that stand alone and then the next uh, one that you end up with will have two double crochets into the same stitch. So I always kind of remember it as like a, a configuration of two, um, two and two. So two um, single, uh, uh, two double crochets in a row and then the next one is then two double crochets into the same stitch. And uh, however it is for you to remember, that's up to you and that's just the way that I remember myself. And so again, I just dropped one. <laughs> I'm making it look more difficult than it is. Sometimes it's harder to film in front of a camera than it is to sit on the sofa and actually do it. So continue that same configuration of two double crochets by themselves and then two together and keep going all the way around. So I'm coming up to the close of the end of round number four and I just wanna say something. So I have two double crochets here in the same and then I have three stitches left. And so basically keeping with the same configuration of two that are standing alone by themselves, two double crochets. The next one is then two into the same one. You can see that I have not miscounted anything along the round because if you end up with the two at the final, then you know you've done a great job. So what we have to do is just join it with a slip stitch like so. Let's move our stitch marker up one more as we go and complete off round number four. And let's move on to round number five next. Okay, this project is going really quickly. Let's go round number five. We're gonna start off with the chaining of three. So one, two, and three. And we're going to put the next two double crochets in. They're gonna be by themselves, okay? So this is not quite the same as the last one. And the reason for it is remember that chaining of three counts as one. So therefore, there's actually three standalone double crochets and then the next one is going to be two double crochets into the same stitch. So your configuration for this round, for round number five, is that there's going to be three double crochets by themselves and then the next one is gonna have two double crochets into the same stitch. Please do that same configuration all the way around. I'll meet you back up at the end. We only have to expand one more time because this is going so quick that we're almost at the full diameter at the bottom of the container. Okay, let's finish off round number five together. We have our doubles in there and now we're just going to put three in a row, so three double crochet. And I happen to have four stitches left, so that means I have not lost count along my journey. And so then the final stitch has your double, just like so. Let's join that with the slip stitch and we are gonna move up, we're gonna join that and let's move that stitch marker up. And we're gonna move up to round number six. Round number six is the, the final round before, uh, is the final round of expanding the diameter. So this is already at the level now that the container bottom is almost done. So let's move up to round number six next. 
to begin round number six we're just simply going to chain three like we already know and then the next three are going to be by themselves. So just starting right here and just go in for double crochet for three. Remember that chaining of three counts is a double crochet and so in actual fact in this revolution there are four double crochets standing alone before putting to a double. So we have our three in there and now two double crochets into the same one. So again this one just a quick review round number six is four double crochets by themselves. One, two, and three, and four. And the next one is two into the same stitch. Please do that same configuration all the way around. So I'm just finishing up round number six and again we're gonna finish on the double at the end. So now what we're gonna be doing is changing the game plan. Now in the very beginning I told you that we're gonna do something weird in the side. So the last stitch is two double crochets. Let's just join that with the slip stitch. Even if you've miscounted along the way I'm gonna show you how to cheat that as well. And basically it's joined with a slip stitch and then move that stitch marker up because the round number um, seven is a lot is, is interesting. It, it shows you how to do a lip so that you have a nice flat base so that your container will grow properly and straight up at the same time. So let's begin. We're looking at round number six that's right here and round number seven and eight is going to be playing with this same round again. We're going to be creating a lip and you really cannot see it on the project so I can't even I just pull that up and show you. So I'm just going to begin to show you right now. So we're going to chain one and it says on this one here this is round number seven. It says working in the front loops only single crochet into the same stitch as you joined. Okay, so we're gonna do that front loops only. So let's do that same uh, stitch that you joined. Okay, and we're doing the front only. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a sec. So the front loops if you're not aware. So there's two always. So these are considered one stitch when you're used together. So if you do front loops only that means that you're going to grab loops that are in the front side only and if you do the ones on the back side those are the back loops. So what th this is saying for this particular round is that we're going to single crochet into the front loops only going all the way around of this one here. So we just uh, simply just come into the front side only and single crochet. So we just come up. So normally we would go across and grab both but we're just going to come up and just grab the first one. And what this is doing is leaving a gateway for us to be able to do some fancy lip work at the bottom of the container. So what's happening here at this point, let me explain this to you. The back loops is gonna leave a ridge and we're gonna use those in round number eight. So continue all the way around using the front loops only to single crochet and then I'll move you to round number eight next. Okay, I'm still continuing along round number seven. I'm just finishing up and getting my last one in and then I'm going to come to the first single crochet and just join like this. So just join it. Make sure I grab both in there and join them too. So I'm going to move that stitch marker up. Once we get to the basket we vary it. You don't really have to worry about that stitch marker but for now it's better to put it in just in case you are getting lost at this point. So let's uh, just pull that tight and let's move on to round number eight and round number eight is another special round. Okay, so what we need to do then for round number eight is that we just simply have to look back to round number six where we see the lift of those back loops and we're immediately we're going to chain one to start and then what we just do is just flip it back. You can see the, the back loops there on round number six and we're going to single crochet with those all the way around. So what this has done is it's that it's made round number seven stand alone on its own so that you have a permanent lip at the bottom of your container just like so. So it's a really great idea in order to really bring balance uh, to it. It's really, it's actually really quite fabulous. So just please single crochet into the back loop of round number six all the way around and I'll meet you back up and we're going to be starting to do the basket weave in only two more rounds. Okay, I'm just finishing up round number eight and so you can see there, there's a lip now 
on the bottom, okay? So this is what's gonna sit down. So now we're ready to start doing the basket weave but we have to prepare one more layer before we continue. So when we're coming all the way, way around I wanna make sure that I slip stitch to the top of the back area here. So I don't wanna stick on this front, just stick to the back, okay? So you will just make sure just leave a little bit of extra slack so this is not being pulled up so that it will just look like it's like this. Just leave a little bit of extra slack so it comes down. So let's uh, begin. We're going to do round number nine. We're simply just going to chain three. One, two, and three. And it's gonna be really easy to tell your rounds at this point. And simply we are just going to double crochet into each one of the rounds all the way around. So this is preparing for the basket weave that will be starting next and in order to have basket weave we have to have double crochets in already so that we can start playing with the front and the back posts uh, as we go around. So please double crochet into each single crochet all the way around. I'm coming all the way back around and I just want to finish off my last final stitch but I'm not going to finish it off all the way. I'm going to stop right here. And off camera I'm running out of this yarn so this is a great opportunity to show you how to change colors. So what we're going to do then is that I'm just going to grab some other spare yarn that I'm working with and pink and <laughs> white talk about color clash and basically I do not want to create a knot with this because you'll see it. Simply just put a loop onto the hook and just pull through and that will complete off that final stitch and then using the new yarn what I want to do is that I want to use the new yarn. So just put this aside, the two stragglers, the other side, and I want to finish the slip stitch with the new yarn, like this. Okay, so this allows me to take a needle or a, yarn, a darning needle to hide in the loose ends afterwards. So let's uh, begin. We're going to move up to round number nine. And round number nine is really quite simple. We just have to follow the pattern. So let me pull up the sample that we are working with here. You'll notice that the basket weave here is consisting of three stitches. So what we have to do is that we have to commit to doing the stitch work on the very first one. So let's follow the pattern. And it says to um, chain three. Let's begin. So chain three, one, two, and three. And it says to back post a double crochet around the next two. Now this technically would be included as one of the three. Okay, so that's what it's saying. So it's saying to do back post in the next three. So we wrap, we come around the back and in between the posting area here and flip it out pushing that post backward like that. And pull through and finish it off as a regular double crochet. This goes really quickly once you get the spin of it. Okay, so we wrap and we come to the next one, out through the back, pop it, and finish it with a double crochet. So instead of grabbing it by the top, we're grabbing it by the post. So the next three are going to be front post double crochet. So we wrap and we come in to the post here and pop it, okay, on the front side. And this is what's creating the interesting basket weave. Okay, so we do that three times in a row. So in the front, pop it. I don't know if pop it's the right word, but that's what I'm using. So you just do three in a row. So then the next three are in the back. So we wrap, coming from the back, pop through the front, okay, and then finish it. And that's all we're going to do on this whole entire round. So every third, one or every time we just do groups of three and then we just switch which side we're going at. So I'm at the back right now. So I have my three done. Okay and then we just come to the front side like this. So please do that all the way around and I'm going to show you how to cheat the system just in case that you're off by one and how to finish it at the very end as we go all the way around. So I'm coming all the way around and I'm going to be on the front side here. And I should be on the front side because these are on the back side. I have to say, <laughs> I'm surprised I've got the right stitch count because on the original I didn't, I was off by one. So what happens here is that if you have only two stitches left and you still have to do a set of three. This is what I would recommend. So for example, we're going to come on the front side and let's just say that there was two stitches left but you have to make sure that there's three. What you can do, and this is totally cheating but it's legal in my rule. So we can put two double crochets around the same post like this and basically that creates two and then you can go in the next one just like so. It is a little bit obvious 
right here. But uh, but now what you've done here is that you've created it so it's gonna be in balance for the remainder of this uh, container. So this is the critical point right now where we have to establish that or you can just uh, say you know what I only have two there I'm not gonna worry about it I'm, I'm gonna have one layer that looks like it's off. That's again your particular call on what you want to do. If you um, for example say you have four here and you want to so let's just say for example you have four and you should have only had three so to make two into one you can just uh, do two together so you can just come around the front post okay and not finish it and then just go around the next post like this. This is how you would do a hat as well. So you have two posts here and then you pull through all three and basically that just became one at the very top. So that's how you can narrow it down as well or leave it so that you have a group of four. So those are kind of cheating techniques. Uh, you have to be in balance at this point. That's if instead of frogging everything that's just the better way to go as far as I'm concerned. So once you get all the way around we're going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three like this and then we're gonna start the next game plan. To begin the next game plan this basket weave changes every row. What does that mean? It means that we're gonna have to reverse everything that we've just done. So what we're going to do is that we're starting off with a chain three just like we have been before but this time see how it's on the back here and then this one's on the front we're gonna reverse. So we're going to anything on the reverse will then pop out through the front. We're gonna do front post double crochet on anything that is in the back. Okay, so there's gonna be only two here because uh, you have to chain up the three to equal that third one. So these are on the front so then this time when we come around we're gonna come around the back and pop them backward. That's all this is. Now other, this is the first time I've ever seen it like this before. I've always seen afghans where there's like several rows where you have to match the same thing. So if it's on the front post you keep it on the front post for like three or four rows. This one here is reversing every row like this. Do you see that? So then the next one here it's on the back so this time we come forward and the remainder of this whole container is just like this. So every row going right up to the top on the very final uh, row of this whole project you are just going to single crochet around. So I'm gonna leave that for you because now you know how to either change color you've already been able to make it in balance and then you know how to do this so you just have to go and just reverse it every row. So this time it's on the front so this row coming in has to come from the back and vice versa and continue to do that all the way up for the remainder of this container. So here's where I'm going to leave you today to do the remainder because every row is identical as far as uh, following it along just make sure you're reversing your stitches every every row and this is what you end up with. You end up with a beautiful basket weave. Now what you can do is, do is that you can either count your rows but you can actually count up two. So you can go on a diagonal. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So you'll end up with 16 by the time you get to the top and then you're just going to do a single crochet around the very top. You can add your handles as per the pattern and then if you're doing the crochet challenges with us you can apply your motifs and make it really fun and fabulous. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd and we'll see you.